Question 40 on graph paper, draw a line segment AB um, if A is at the point 6, 2 and B is at 3, 5. So I've already set that up in my graph paper. You can see here um, I went over, over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then up 2, and then I went over 3 and up 5. So those are the points AB. And I drew it as a segment because it said draw the line segment, not the entire line. Um, the next thing it says is, for part A, it says reflect AB across the line X equals 3. So let's take a look at that. First of all, the, the line X equals 3 consists of all of these points, right? On every single one of these points, the X value is 3. Y is changing all the time, but regardless of where I go on here, X is 3. So let me go ahead and draw that line. Let me grab the... Uh, right color. I'm going to use this orange color and let me grab my line segment tool and I'm just going to draw this as the line the line x equals 3. There we go. And let me label that x x equals 3. And what we're supposed to do now is we're supposed to reflect this line segment across this line. So everything is going to get, you know, moved over over like this. Uh, one of the points is going to stay exactly where it is, and that's the point that's at 3, 5. But this point here um, at 6, 2 is going to find itself living at this location right here. It's going to be at the point 0, 2. Um, okay, so that's the reflection. Did it say reflect the whole segment? Let's see. Reflect AB. Yeah, so reflect the whole segment. So let me grab a... Um, the line tool again, I'll make this one um, black. And let me go ahead and draw that line segment. So from here, uh, I missed it. Sometimes it helps me if I zoom in more. So connect that point down to here. And I think the final thing that it says to do is it says um, uh, connect points A and A prime. What shape is created by this reflection? Be as specific as possible. So the last thing I need to do is I need to go ahead and connect up these these points right here from A all the way over to A prime. And the question is, what shape is that? Well, one of the things I notice right away is um, there are um, a couple of right triangles here. And if I look at this, this is three units long, this is three units long, and this is three units long. What that means is that um, these values up here, these hypotenuses, those have to be the same, right? So if I'm thinking about a right triangle that's three by three, it has two legs, one leg is three, the other leg is three. And if I call this hypotenuse x, oops, and this is three and this is three, I know that x squared would equal 3 squared plus 3 squared. So x squared is the number 18. And if I take the square root of both sides of this, I do get plus or minus root 18, right? So x equals plus or minus the square root of 18. Um, and this root 18 simplifies as 2 times the square root of 3. And I'm only caring about the positive root here because it's the length of a side of a triangle. So x ends up being um, 3 times the square root of 2, which is, um, it's it's not necessary that you tell me that, but because these are exactly the same length, I know that this is an isosceles triangle. It's, an, it's a triangle with two writing. And then, the other, ah, I just thought about this. Um, uh, if this, and I don't know yet, but let's think about it. If this is a right angle, it would be an isosceles right triangle. As it is, I know it's an isosceles triangle. Um, this would be a right angle if the slopes of these two different lines, right, if the slope of this line and the slope of this line were opposite reciprocals of each other. And in the one case, this, this line has a slope that is, um, let's see, down one over one, so it's negative one over one. And the other one has a slope that is up one over one. So yeah, they, <clears throat> They are reciprocals of each other. The number one is a reciprocal of itself, and they're opposites. One's positive, one, one's negative. So this is clearly an isosceles right triangle. So let me zoom out and write that, that this uh, is an isosceles, I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S, -E -E an isosceles right angled triangle. All right, so let's go on to part B. 
So for part B, it says, consider again the line segment AB, but this time they wanted us to reflect it across the line uh, Y equals negative X plus six. Um, and actually I need to, and let me adjust this so it lines up with the grid. Okay, so that lines up much better now. So you can see this particular line is the line Y equals negative X plus six. I'm right up here at a y-intercept of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I have a slope pattern of down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. So the orange line is the line y equals negative x plus 6, and it asks me to reflect our line segment, um, a, a, b, this, this line segment, to reflect it across that line. And when I reflect it across it, right, what ends up happening is I get this new line segment right here, and this ends up making a very nice uh, rectangle. Um, and I could probably, I could calculate the dimensions of the rectangle if I wanted to, but they're not asking that. I am just gonna go ahead and say it is it is a rectangle. And uh, I, I'm pretty confident about these being right angles. Uh, but as I think about it now, so it's like, how do I know that that's really a right angle? Well, I it's because I am reflecting across a parallel line, right? The line that I'm reflecting it across has the exact same slope pattern as segment AB. If they didn't have the same slope pattern, this could be like a trapezoid or some other polygon. But because AB, the segment, um, has a slope of negative 1 and this line in orange, y equals negative x plus 6, because it has a slope of negative 1. When I reflect those, that parallel, that one parallel line across the line of reflection, I, I end up with a rectangle. So that's part B.